You know, of course, a mid-year assessment review only really makes sense if you set out the beginning of the year with a clear direction of where you were uh, intending to go, right? That you set a clear target. And that's exactly what our conversation was when we started this year, at least at Tacoma Christian Center, right? We had a theme, we had a purpose, we've been charged to set and meet a mark. So the question of, did you set that mark? Did you meet it? Will you still set and meet it? Could you hit the mark that you set out there? Will you be able to do that in the end? Because in order to get to a destination, right, we have to set the course, set the navigation, and then move in that direction in order to achieve it. You know, the theme says, it is written. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That is referenced in Philippians 3.14. That was Paul's statement. That was the driver for him and for everything that he was doing in his life, was pressing towards a mark, knowing that if God charged him to do it, he would achieve it. He would accomplish the calling, the vocation, the work that God gave him to do. It was everything that was every part of his fiber and his breath and his ministry. And we can see it across every book that he penned by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so in the book of Philippians 3.14, we look at that message and we grabbed hold of it the beginning of the year. And then we're charged, therefore, set the mark achieve the mark, get it all done in the year 2021. No, the year is not over yet, but if we're gonna get it all done in this year, it's a perfect time right now to stop and ask ourselves where we're at, how much further do we have to go? What comes next in the journey of hitting and achieving the mark that has been set? Because when we hit that mark, when we achieve it, when we get it done, to God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So our questions tonight really are tailored all around this. Did you set the mark? Did you press toward the mark? Did you achieve the mark? Did you get it all done? And of course, these are the same questions I'm asking myself. And each of us have that opportunity to look in the mirror. And it's good because it's motivation. There might be a little bit of conviction, but there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. This is just about a chance to stop and look at where we are. How much further do we have to climb? Or have we reached maybe all those goals that we already set? And maybe there's an opportunity to set some more, to maybe make a bigger mark for us to go after because we accomplished one that we didn't necessarily think we could, but we did. We accomplished it already. And so it's time to look even further. And if you haven't set the mark or achieved it yet, will you? Will you set a new mark? Will you reset that mark? Will you press towards that mark with a new vigor? Will you achieve the mark by the end of 2021. Will you get it all done in 2021? A great assessment moment for us to have tonight, thinking about those things. And if you need to pause this to, to write those things down, if you need to go back and find where you set marks for yourself this year, be sure to do that. And if you weren't with us the beginning of the year and you didn't see our New Year's messages, you can go back and review them or you can stop right now and decide again. By the end of the year, where do you know the Lord is calling you to be. You know, part of the could you, could you do it? We can see that mark. We can set our sights on it, but do you believe that you can accomplish it? And not only can you do it, will you do it? Could you, would you take the next steps that are needed in order to achieve that mark, get to the point of success and victory? A course is simply the route or direction that you are following in order to get to that mark, right? We all journey in different ways. And sometimes we feel like we're traveling uh, too slow. Sometimes we are traveling too fast and the Lord has pushed us forward much more quickly and has opened those doors. So we're all in a different journey. We have all taken a different course, but every course that we take should lead to the mark that God has given you. In, in 2 Timothy 4, 7, Paul is speaking to, to Timothy, his protege, right? Saying, I have fought a good fight. 
I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Timothy has learned this from Paul, the importance of finishing his course, staying on track. But notice that he says, I fought a good fight. It was a fight to do it. And I had to keep the faith that I could do it in order to get to the finish line. And we need that conviction because not every course is easy, right? We have to fight our way through some roadblocks sometimes. We have to push to keep the faith so that we keep going towards those things that we know God has called us to do. So it's not always easy when you're on the right route, but the right route will take you where you need to go. So really think about that course. How have you positioned yourself? Because to get to the mark takes a little bit of planning. It takes a little bit of navigation. It takes steps that are ordered to take us where we are trying to go. See, there's some options that we have now as we assess where we are, where our course has brought us and where our course will take us in the end. One option that we might have is just stay the course. We're halfway there as we get to halfway through the year. We know that the course we're on will take us to the mark that God has called us to accomplish. And if that is the case, our first option is to stay the course. Proverbs 15, 21 says, folly brings joy to one who has no sense, but whoever is understanding keeps a straight course. If you understand what God wants for you, keep on a straight, direct path, as direct as possible to accomplish it. It's so easy, like the ant in the grasshopper, to get distracted into play and to chase after other things that take you off course. But just like that story of the ant in the grasshopper, in the end, when it really came down to it, the ant was prepared. The ant hit the mark and the grasshopper was not where the grasshopper wanted to be. He had some fun, but he wasn't where he wanted to be at the end of the journey, at the end of the year, at the end of the mark. So keep that understanding. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of what the mark is so that we can stay straight on the path on the course that's going to take us there. Another option as we look is that maybe we have to return to the mark. If we have strayed away, if we've chased some other things, if we got busy with other things and lost sight of the mark that God has given us. And Ecclesiastes reminds us of this. It says the wind blows to the south and turns to the north, round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. Sometimes the wind does shift us off course. We have to respond to a family concern. We have to respond to a health concern. We get turned around in the middle of some chaos, but God keeps saying, once you get turned around, set your eyes back on the mark. See that mark again. Return to the mark so then your course can be set again to lead you back to that mark so that you're able to accomplish it and get it all done by the end of 2021. Another option possibility is that maybe you're at a place where you need to adjust the mark. You know, some people put down things at the beginning of the year that they thought were important, that they thought was what God wanted them to be doing. But as you grow closer to the Lord, as you walk through the year, maybe your priorities have shifted. Maybe God has talked to you about your priorities and what he's wanting you to do as the next step in your journey. And we have to yield to that and realize if it's a mark that God has set for us, he's going to make our path straight. If it's a mark that we shouldn't be pursuing, now is a great time to know that, that we are pursuing and chasing after the wrong thing and let God reset the mark. Bring it to one that's within reach. Bring it to one that will bring him that glory in the end. And Proverbs 19, 6 says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. There's a way we think we should be going about getting to that mark, but the Lord will actually order our steps get us to that mark in a way that he is setting up for us to succeed, that he is setting up for us to learn and grow through. So we always want the quick and direct path. He might keep us going towards that mark, but have our journey 
wander a little bit through some different places, have our journey take us to something that maybe we think is a barrier, but we realize it's actually an opportunity for victory. And sometimes this adjustment has been that we want to be able to have a job that we are proud of. We want to be able to have the resources to take care of our family. And if the middle of things, your job changed, you were forced to leave a job that you thought was going to be the way to get you where you wanted to be. But God says, no, I'm going to let that unravel around you so you can let go of it. And I'm going to place you in a place that actually positions you for all those things that I've called you to do. Right. We've always got plans in our own head, but we have to be open to let the Lord establish our steps and establish the course and the mark that we are moving towards that we will accomplish by the end of this year. You know, it's so good just to reach back, look at our own history and how God has done this for us in the past, but also open ourselves up to see the history of God's heroes of faith, of those who lived it from the past. That's part of the reasoning of the gospel. We get to see these real people who have stepped into this and have journeyed this before. And since Paul was speaking his position to us in Philippians, right, he's the one who is saying that we need to press on towards the prize. It's really important to look at his life and what he can share with us. And I think we find some great instruction here in the book of Acts. It says, you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly from house to house. Just noticed, I've not hesitated, right? He has pressed on and he has done exactly what he was supposed to do because he thought it would be helpful to other people. And he did it publicly. He didn't hide what he was doing. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now compelled by the spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Now, wait a minute. Notice here in verse 22, he says, I'm compelled by the Spirit to go. And I'm going to go do what I was told to do. There is a mark that I have to accomplish. I'm going to pursue and press forward with that prize, not knowing how I'm going to be treated there, not knowing how it's going to be turn, how it's going to turn out. We're not always guaranteed that things are going to be kind and nice in the process and the journey, even if we're going exactly where God is compelling us to go. And in fact, he says, I know that in every city that I enter into, the Holy Spirit is already warning me that I'm going to disrupt something. I'm going to make people upset with me. I, likely there will be prison and hardships that are going to be facing to me as a consequence of me doing exactly what God has called me to do. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me. My only aim is to hit that mark with a confidence that I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit and he's going to walk me through and I'm going to succeed in doing that task. In his case, it's the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. And he said, I'm going to testify to that grace, even if it upsets some people, even if there's some hardships that are going to have to be overcome. Because the Holy Spirit is saying, beware of those hardships. But even though I'm saying, beware of the hardships, don't stop. Because there might be hardships doesn't mean don't go. You have to finish the race. You have to complete the task that you have been given. That is the mark. And he's asking here, and Paul is having to answer for himself. Will you, Paul, will you go do it? Knowing what you know? Could you do this, Paul? Would you go forth and do it? knowing that there's going to be some hardships. And Paul was able to answer yes. You know, we've highlighted Philippians 3.14, but the verses that lead up to it are pretty important as well, right? Because the whole message is for us to take action, for us to press on. These are things that we have to do in order to set the mark and achieve 
the mark. The mark doesn't come to us. We have to press on and go get it. And we have to keep pursuing it, right? And overcome certain things in order to get there. So this year really is about accountability. And that's why it's important for us to step back right now and just said, have I done those things that I know God wanted me to do? When I set that mark, have I set my course to accomplish it? If I re found any opposition along the way, did I press on through it? So again, at this moment of decision, we can follow the same pattern as Paul and decide how are we going to proceed in pursuing our mark? How are we going to succeed in achieving our mark? Paul said, not that I have already obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal. We are all a work in progress. So we have achieved many things in our lives up to this point. But we also have not obtained all that there is to obtain. We have not already arrived at achieving every mark or goal that God has put in our life. And that is not a reason for shame. That is not trying to add condemnation. That is just a statement about where we are, knowing that we are all works in progress. Paul had to work at this. Paul was sharing with us his journey. And as soon as he accomplished one mark, God was providing him another Right, And he could see how each of these missions, how each of these opportunities God was giving him were leading and building one upon the other. So he's saying, I don't get uh, all of these things. I don't automatically know exactly how to do things right. I don't automatically do the right things. I don't automatically have it easy. I haven't obtained all that God wants me to learn in this life. But this, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Christ Jesus took hold of me. He grabbed me. He brought me into his family. He took hold of me for a reason. So I want to take hold of what I've been set apart for. I want to take hold and do those things that I was specifically created to do. I want to press on to really grab hold of all of that and learn who he made me to be and help me see what all he's willing to do to protect me into when I am doing what he has called me to do. All the greatest miracles that you read about happened when somebody took hold of what Christ made them and called them to do, recognizing that God claimed us first. He loved us first. He brought us into the kingdom. He adopted us in. And since we belong to him and he's taken hold of us, now is our chance to take hold of all those things which he has given us to do in this life, to represent him well. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. I haven't grabbed hold of that mark completely, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. We all learned the hard way from certain things and our learning of the hard things should actually make us more confident in Christ and more confident in what we can accomplish with Christ than less. If there's been a failure, let that failure go. Let every failure or false start that happened January through May go and press on, build on, keep going towards the goal in the mark that God gave you for this year. Learn what you need to learn. Take advantage of what you've already positioned yourself for and now press on to really take hold of it. Knowing it's okay, if you haven't taken hold of it yet, there is still plenty of time this year, but choose to proceed. And either you're gonna keep on the same course you've been on or use this as an opportunity to course correct and shift your course so that it lines up once again, back to those things that God called you to do in 2021. Right, he keeps this message again. We said, Timothy's a protege. Timothy is one that he's been pouring his heart and soul into. And Timothy has some of these same messages that he is passing forward in this 
press on? What does it look like? What does it sound like? How do you know that you are pressing into the things of God? And quite clearly, it's called out. It says, do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you, right? Don't neglect the gifts that God has given you. He's put gifts and talents in you for a reason. We know there's other parables about not burying them, not hiding them. Don't neglect the gifts that you've been given because those gifts inside you are those things which are going to help you achieve your mark. And then be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. There's progress that happens inside of us and then there's progress that people around you see because they can see your confidence. They can see your strength. They can see your boldness. They can see your success. When we give ourselves diligently to those things, people recognize that we are God's handiwork, right? That we are created beings who were made with a special purpose and everyone should see the value of the uniqueness and glory inside of you. So let them see it. Give yourself wholly to those things God has called you to do, that he's equipped you to do because people will celebrate God in you. He further says, watch your life and doctrine closely. Watch your life. Watch how you're spending your time. Make sure you're not getting distracted or spending too much time on folly, as those earlier Proverbs talked about. Watch your life. Watch your doctrine and what you believe. Watch what you're having faith in because your faith determines the expectations and the hopes that you have in life. Watch over them right? You need to protect them and make sure that they don't get compromised and then persevere in them. Persevere because if you do, you will save both yourselves and your hearers. Now see that persevering in what God called you to do. Again, that mark that he's given you, the pressing on for the prize of the high calling. It is a prize that you get that you get to hold on to and stand before him and hear the well done, good and faithful servant. But also when you persevere in using your gifts and doing those things that God called you to do, you're not only going to save yourself, make yourself whole and complete before God. You're going to save other people, the people who are hearing, who are seeing, who are watching, who need to understand that the God who loved them and created them has a journey for them that is just as rich, just as powerful as your own. So knowing that as we pursue our own course, we are going to bless and touch other people along our course. We're going to encourage them to pursue and dive even further on their journey. So what we choose to do right now in our mid-year review is going to have an impact on those who are walking alongside us for even a short amount of time who need to be encouraged and blessed on their own journey as well. So it's not too late. Remember, it is written, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Set the mark, achieve the mark, get it all done in the year 2021. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is so much more to this year, more for you to explore, more for you to do, more love for you experience from God, more blessing for you to provide. So whatever it is that God is calling you to do, I just encourage you this year, let him, let him use you in ways that maybe you hadn't thought about being used before. So set a fresh mark now, a mark that you can see ahead of you that you can achieve by the end of the year and ask yourself, will you, could you, would you, and then go after it because God can use anything. And now more than ever, this world needs him to use you as you pursue in your journey to achieve your mark.